Welcome to MK Randoms and today I'm going to make a video about how to start a street food business. I've run my own coffee shop, um, student enterprise coffee shop at my university. I, I opened that, I ran that, I had a team of people under me. Also, I ran a street food sourdough pizza business for half a year. That was really fun. And basically, I had a few friends ask me, like, what are the steps? Because there's definitely a few. And let's go. So here's my top 10 points on how to start a street food business. Okay, find your company's name. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the brand name, but it does help. So for instance, I had Yippie's Canteen Limited as my registered company name. That was different from the brand name. The brand name was Tomato Pizza. And like, it can be the same, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same. Because a lot of companies like, like PepsiCo is like, the corp is like the official name for the whole corporation that is Pepsi. And then there's like Pepsi UK, Pepsi USA. So it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same. But it's good to bear in mind. Same, but if you look in the link down below, you can basically find a place where you search out names to see if they've already been taken. So it's a simple one, almost as a Google. Number two, you register a company's house in the UK. So you register a company's house online. It's so simple as almost a few clicks, and then you pay online, like you would for anything nowadays, like on eBay or Amazon and they send you a letter confirming that you've started a business. There's several types of business. You can open a private limited company, a limited liability partnership, a limited partnership, and also you can open as a sole trader. And number three, you need to get a certificate from the free stand agency. The one I got was a level two food safety and hygiene for catering. It costs 20 quid, but also there's like options out there for like 100 pounds. The one for 20 pounds is basically you get a PowerPoint, an online PowerPoint, and you answer questions straight after. The one for 100 pounds is basically where you go to a like, call, you go to, you go in to a catering establishment for a day. They literally teach you the same stuff, but more hands-on and it with more face-to-face -face contact. Number four, you register your business with the council. Then the count the council is then gonna come and interview you, check your establishment, check your food setup, your equipment and if you haven't got that ready they're going to just interview you, see what your plans are and based on that they'll give you a rating from 1 to 5, 5 being the best and based on that you'll be able to, you'll be able to trade. So the council tries to uphold certain standards so it's really important for them to know what you're up to. If you don't have this then you won't be able to trade anywhere. But you gotta be careful, I do this almost like the, as the first step. Registering the council can take a while, it can take up to six months or more, but generally for me it took about three, four months. But you wanna do it as soon as possible because let's say there's the council are busy and stuff, I mean, you can be delayed. If you haven't been registered properly, you're gonna have this be your bottleneck, which is gonna slow you down. It's really hard to actually register a home kitchen because it's, it's basically for domestic use. So it's really hard to uphold the highest standards. So there'll always be a few crumbs, a bit of mess. Sometimes the door will be open to outside and you can't have a kitchen, a commercial kitchen open to the outside elements where flies can come in. So it's hard to get that license, for instance. Um, but a street food outlet on the road in different places and stuff is much easier. And you'd think almost that wouldn't be the case because you're outside. But there's that kind of grey area in like street food where they're very tolerant, very tolerant. But also you want to keep your standards high because in a small company you're more likely to be searched, like checked out randomly. Because in new companies they're gonna just if you think about it, there's gonna be an increased chance of the new company where it's just starting out and doesn't really know about the industry getting like food food hygiene problems compared to large corporations where they have systems set in place which are upheld really strictly. So just bear in mind, I mean, because you could just get caught once and then you get banned. Number five, get your food equipment ready. I bought so much with eBay and Gumtree. 
I mean, now it's so easy to, to set things up. You don't need to be, you go to a specialist store, everything's online. You can just do it from a click from your room. Laptop, it's so cool. Number six, test out beforehand. Um, I didn't actually use my pizza oven until the actual event for the first time. Um, that was the worst example. And you know what? The first trading event was so stressful because then I used the wrong wood because it was a wood fired oven. And you know what? You want to basically iron out your problems before it really matters. But the reason I had to be so fast is because it was, it was already getting well into summer and I needed to be selling straight away, I mean, in the summer, because summer's the peak season in the UK when the weather's actually all right. <laughs> so, I first time I traded my pizza, it was on the 22nd of June, 2015. But if you don't, if you don't trade, if you don't make money, like, then you won't be able to stay open. So you got to know when the busy times and really push it. Number seven. Apply to low to various local markets to trade. For me, it was about getting as many different experiences in different parts of London, festivals, carnivals, street food markets, to, to really understand what I wanted, where I wanted to be. Costs are anywhere from £20 to £100 a day, where sometimes a profit share is even wanted. So they will even take over £100 a day, let's say, in the busiest, most exclusive private events and then they want a profit share let's say 25% on top. Number eight, register with NCAS National Nationwide Caterers Association. They help you write a risk assessment which is really legally required if you want to officially trade and they also offer like free guidance so you can call them up and they'll give you like expert knowledge and advice and contacts and they even send you texts of like private and public events within your food category within the area you want to be trading in. This is fantastic because basically after that you're just applying for jobs and it gives you it gives you a really great opportunity to get out. Number nine, with how the internet is going, it's so important to set up a basic website. More than anything, it makes you look professional. I mean, I created a website in half a day. Yeah, it was called tomatoes.co.uk. And when you go for interviews to possible markets, you, you don't know the impression you give. I mean, they're like, they were so excited. They, they thought I was some, somebody legit. They didn't know I just started up. So you can start several basic websites for like three, four, five pounds a month, or where everything is customized and it looks so professional. It, with websites such as Squarespace, Wix, GoDaddy, WordPress. Really easy, easy, easier than it ever was before. Number 10, social media. It's so easy to create social media pages. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is a complete basic for any company nowadays. And it's the beautiful thing is that it's free to open these sites up and connect to your website. And basically it allows you to connect to future customers and fellow businesses and of course look professional. Those are my top 10 pointers on how to start a street food company. I can't tell you how much fun I had trading as a street food vendor. It was great fun, it was a great sense of community and it was just the best when you get that compliment from someone saying, you know what that pizza was, something different, you know, something really good, something know and just and just trading and just sharing food with people trying to make the day even more fun and enjoyable for you and if you can do even a little bit of that I'm sure you're gonna be really happy and if you've got an idea to if you've got an idea for a new unique street food business then just do it it's easier than it ever has been before if you have any questions just link me below and try to help you guys out as much as possible I've got several different people actually ask me how to start a street food business and I've been telling them like individually. So here it's just everything can put down. It's down to you guys now. So show me what you guys are made of.